Hey y'all, I'm coming back at you again with uh, the next video in the series, which is how to diagnose these pre-play, um, what they're going to look like, as well as different ways to attack them. Um, I went over a little bit of basics of where some of the holes are in the defense before. Now I want to go over different ways to attack these zones. So, first things first, we're going to look at this cover four. Now, I'm sorry, I was in the cover three. So in the cover four pre-play, it's going to look something pretty similar to this. You're going to have these two safeties up deep. These two safeties are where you want to look pre-play. They're going to tell you typically, unless your opponent's coming out in a base scheme, which if they are coming out in a base scheme, um, where basically their defense looks exactly the same every time, um, you're going to have a little bit less pre-play to go off of than normal. You're going to have to go more off their tendencies and where they're moving guys. Um, however... A lot of guys don't like to base because then you're real vulnerable, especially if you come out in something like a 3-4 a or a 4-3 where everybody's jammed up in the middle. You're much more vulnerable to edges, and, and one of the mini schemes I'm going to come out with actually takes advantage of guys that come out and base every time, and which sucks because I come out and base every time. Um, however, when you're looking at this cover four, one of the ways you can tell is the safeties are back. you got both cornerbacks. Um this guy all the way here on the outside um, is kind of a non-factor because of the, the formation we're in. And also we've audibled a lot out of these various things. But both these cornerbacks, they play generally further off. And you want to look, this is either a cover two or cover four by the instant look. Or a two man under man. But it's doubtful that it's man. Because if it was man um, and they were not coming out in base every time, this cornerback would not be all the way out here. He'd be over top of this wide receiver like this. So, what we're going to go ahead and do is I want to show you a couple different ways that you can attack cover four. Now, I'm in cluster here. Um, this is just one basic play here. Um, this is verticals. Out of Generally, it's out of the bunch. Everybody's seen this play before. If they've played Madden for any period of time, um, you can make this adjustment. You can attack almost any zone just with this one play. Um, and I'll show you two of the ways how. So, I'm going to hike the ball here. I'm going to let the play run out. Just make the quick throw. I want to go to the instant replay so I can show you all real quick. Different reads on the play. So, as we hike the ball here, you can see he's coming out in this cover four. Now, I got a guy... I got Jakeem Grant dragging here on the outside, as you can see. And when he's dragging, he's actually open right here. I could make that throw for a good three or four yards to the drag route. However, there's really no need to, um, given I wanted to let this run through. Another thing is, you got Brita on um, the quick out. I could have hit him right here for another big gain. And because Gasicki is running this wheel route, he's going to take that purple, as you can see, follows him all the way back. And Brita's open underneath for a 5 or 10 yard gain. But I went for the bigger play as I got Devontae going deep on that left side. And Wilson is going to come right underneath in that little honey hole. And two is going to make the throw. So basically what I was doing was attacking the honey holes on the left side with the drag route. Because this drag route here is going to take, it's going to occupy this left side zone. And then this wheel is also going to occupy this outside zone. And that's going to leave him coming open because he's coming over late and, and him coming open because he's coming over late. And we put down analog, hit him right there in the honey hole. Um, Tampa 2. Again, as you can see, the Tampa 2 look, you're going to have a similar look, but mind the corners. You see the corners went a little bit further out. If you're in a cover four, look, he's a little bit further in. The linebacker stays closer in tight because he's covering more of the inside. Um, a real surefire way to tell the Tampa 2 is actually not the safeties. It's these inside linebackers and the corners. Those corners are way outside, um, not sitting over top of anybody. That's a surefire sign. Not only is it a zone, but it's probably a cover two with them down there in that way. Um, one of the ways to read this, you look at the safeties, and like I said, the corners and the linebackers. 
and that's how you cover two. Now I'm going to run the same play, because um, this play will pretty much be any base zone without interference. So again, he doesn't get open. We're going to make this throw here again to Wilson. Now the linebacker followed him this time. Brita took forever to get out, but he did. Once Brita got out, you can see here I can hit him right there. Now another thing, um, I was on the safety, which is why Gasicki comes open late like that. If I was on the safety, he wouldn't have. <coughs> now we got the drag route coming underneath. He's open right there again. Brita's open right there again. But I choose to hit Wilson, who's one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, who's never going to keep up with them in the honey hole. See, this right here, this route will win every time because it's coming delayed over. Um, that's something the opponent is most of the time going to have to sit on or get pressure on to stop me from hitting um, in almost any zone. But you can see here that the wheel route does the exact same thing to that cornerback that it did to the purple zone. Um, leaving Brita with a good 5 or 10 yards without being touched. Drag route coming underneath occupies that flat zone. Now the goal of this play is I have him open and I have him open. Those are the two players that I'm looking at hitting. Because they're on opposite sides of the field so you cannot sit on them both. And they'll burn, like I said, just about every zone. Now the cover three. Now again, this free play is a lot easier to diagnose um, if they're not basing. First of all, there's going to be eight up in the box because that safety is typically, unless they're showing two, um, which can happen. But most of the time in the cover two, that safety is going to come down like that. And you're going to have one safety over the top. Um, you typically know it's not man because of where the cornerbacks, again, are lined up. You see they got their hips turned looking at the quarterback. They're not manned up on man. Let's, you can see a difference if they're in man. And we man align. You see they're looking a little bit more forward. And they're also over top. Whereas, again, in the cover three, hips are a little bit more open. They're a little bit further backed up, looking almost directly at the quarterback. And the safety's up deep. And you got eight guys in the box. So you can pretty much tell immediately that this is the cover three. Um, there's almost no doubt that this is a cover three at all. Now, because of where the safety is, I'm going to show one of the ways that still works in this game. It worked last year as well. So, you see here, I'm going to send Grant deep and Wilson on this quick post. And it'll become apparent why here in a minute. Oh, I was on the safety. Let me... Let me let me get a do over here because Come on, set. Yellow, 43. that doesn't do the play any justice if I'm on the safety so he doesn't move. So I'm gonna send him deep again with the outbreaker, and because of the outbreaker, he's wide open for the one play touchdown. Now in the cover three this year. That worked last year as well. That'll work in this cluster in particular because of the way that outbreaking route is. Because um, as you can see, Wilson breaks out to that right side, and that cornerback comes down hard because he has to. Otherwise, you're going to hit 15 on this outbreaking post route here. Um, and because you got Gasicki coming underneath, you probably could have hit him right here as well on this quick flood. Um, but I just want to show the touchdown play because of where that safety was located. Now, this has to do with the fact the safety is on this left side of the hash. So he's got to cover all this space here. When he's running a streak, the safety's got to think about the fact that where that safety is, the minute that cornerback is running back, he breaks in. He passes him. Now I got all that open space to the right, and because of where that safety is, he's never going to get over there in time. I put the analog, and he's wide open for a touchdown. Um, now that's just judging based on that spacing. That's where those pre-play reads will really help you a lot. 
is that's a, a cover three touchdown play. Now it can be stopped. As a matter of fact, I'll I'll go ahead and prove that you can stop it right now. So you got Z spot. See what you see that corner moved in. Now why did the corner move in? Because I changed his route. I changed his assignment. Now that's gonna be open. But it can be stopped. So it's not unstoppable to beat deep. You're just sacrificing one thing for another. So I basically just put him in a deep half, but you see he moved in a little bit more. And he did. He ran straight back with him. So he wasn't open. But now he's wide open for the easy touchdown. I mean, not easy touchdown. I'm sorry. Easy 20, 30 yard gain. Um, but even if I didn't want to do that, and I just ran what I had been running against all the others. Again, you got the single high safety. You got two safeties coming down. You got eight in the box. This is, and you got those two guys deep with their hips pointed in, looking at the quarterback. This is probably a cover three. So I'm gonna run the same thing I was running before. Y's open, RB's open, everybody's open. We're gonna hit RB again. Not everybody. But as you can see again, this zone has the same problem as the other zones. This is a really good play. Um, if you have the bunch, it, it works very similarly to the way the bunch works. Um, I'm running him underneath, so basically, because Gasicki's running that route, he's going to hold. So Brita's underneath. I could hit Brita right here. Um, another thing I could do against this cover three, if you look, he clears him. I might be able to peg that right there. Um because he's coming out to guard Brita because he sees him coming. Um, but I can hit Brita here for the easy 10. I could hit Grant here since both of those deep zones are occupied. See, I'm hoping you guys are seeing a trend. The entire premise here is we're occupying these zones. So these two zones do not have any choice but to go back with 15. They have to go back with Wilson. It's like him here. He wants to go up and take Grant, but he can't, because otherwise he's open. But then afterwards, I'm going right by, and this purple zone has to come up, and he doesn't know he's coming, so he's coming right in behind him, and we put that down analog, and he's going to make that catch. Um, the same thing here with Brita. If you look at Brita here, it's because of the fact that this route, he has to go out to occupy this, so we just swing somebody in. We give them two guys to cover, and that's any zone. Any zone concept can be attacked in a very similar way to the way I'm attacking it, just with this one verts play. Now you can make adjustments, because here's why you want to run separate plays. Let's say I'm going to run this play the same way I was running it, just like this, right? What I might do, let's say I'm running the cover three, I could say, okay, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and zone out here and I'm going to manually cover, we're, we're going to pretend like I manually covered Wilson. Set, go. Now I got him coming out, oh, now nobody's open because I'm manually covering all these. Now that doesn't mean nobody, I could have still, what's nice about this play against cover three in particular is I could still have hit Gaseki. As you can see, he makes the adjustment, and Breed is covered. And I'm manually covering this guy. You know, we're going to pretend that I was manually covering Wilson. So I can hit him for the quick, quick play, five yards, but that's only five yards. That's not going to satisfy anybody. This is really what I would have hit. Peg him coming out that way. You can do this in the cover four um, or the cover three. However, that's my point, is you can you can make adjustments to any play, but the concept of attacking zones stays exactly the same, which is you are trying to put overload a zone, put two guys in a zone, he's got to cover two, either at different depths or at different areas, and you want to do the same to your opponent because he's going to manually cover this stuff. So um, we're going to go in the cover two man. The way we kind of identify it, again, look at the, the corners. They're up a little bit further. Um, they're closer to the line of scrimmage. Um, this will be even more obvious the more spread out you are. Um, so I'll actually get into, not Hail Mary, 
Let's go with... There we go. Trio. Look at the way they line up against this trio. Very clearly a man coverage. Um, but if you're in a cluster tight, <coughs> the way you can tell is they're up close to the line. They're in as far as they really can be. Um, but they're going to maintain outside leverage. Now the way I would do this, I always leave somebody in the block typically. Um, if I can't, if I feel like somebody's going to blitz. Now we're going to hike it, let it run. Now I just, I just let that run. Um, and made the throw because I wanted to show what I was talking about. And this is the way you want to attack. Man, if you can. So... As you can see, I'm looking down the field. Now, those two outbreaking sharp routes, look at what happened. This outside corner, because of where he is, has his hips turned. Boom. He breaks behind him. I could have made that throw right there. And he's wide open. Easy. Um, Kasiki's open because I'm on his man. So that's that's not fair. Um, he blitzed with five because I blocked with Brita, which tells me that that was the guy's man that I was on. So... Kasiki would have been covered on this play. But the same thing goes here. This inside linebacker is covering him. And actually, he runs a pick play. Um, this snake route does beat him. But look at that. Wilson's got all that space to the outside. And this is... I came out in this formation specifically because... Um, I really do like this formation a lot. It's pretty consistent. It has a lot of different beaters in it. Um, but another reason is because I wanted to show y'all this is the, the type of thing you're going to want to do against a man coverage. Is if you hike this right here, I mean, you just got people all over the field. And it's going to be really hard to do anything from a man coverage perspective. Even if I was manually covering one of these, I can't cover everybody. So because I can't cover everybody, man is pretty much off the table. Because these two routes are going to beat man almost every time. It doesn't matter whether it's cover one. Um, actually, let's go with cover one. I'm, they're up much closer to them, right? On the line, we're going to press coverage. So in a press coverage man situation, first of all, we're going to send one of these guys over the top, typically. But regardless, it doesn't matter. You still got guys open. You still got to cover both sides of the field. Um, as you can see, Wilson still wins. Not as bad, but he still wins. And Devontae absolutely demoralizes. Um, and I'm not even running this to the full potential to beat, man. Honestly, what I'd probably do is run Gasicki or something like that. And make sure that his route is a little bit longer. Um, so he's not breaking as fast. Um, I can also make Parker's route a little bit longer if I want. And do something like this. So I get even more depth. Um, and again, this outside wide out, he just burns. He just absolutely burns whoever's on him pretty much every time. So this is this is the point though, is what you're wanting to do is if you're against man, you want to have plays that attack at different areas of the field. What you do not want to do against against a man coverage. Same thing with zone. You want to overload the zones on different areas of the field, just like that four verts, which is why I showed it. You saw that it attacked on the right side of the field and the left side of the field. So he could not Whoever my opponent is can't manually cover both. Let's say he's running the cover one, right? Um, and let's say that I run mesh post. <clears throat> Perfect example here. And I run him on a slant, I run him on a deep route, and, and we'll just leave it like that. And I mean, that's not a terrible lineup. And I'm, and I'm here in the cover one. Now look what happened. Now, do I have open guys? Yes. 
um, out of this mesh post. I absolutely have open guys. But because of the way that they ran, I could take one single guy. I can cover him initially and then fade back to him. Now, it's not that I can't make the correct read anyway. Like, I threw it to Gaseki, who really didn't have a ton of room either. But I threw it to Gaseki here, who gets the catch um, for 10 yards. But it just leaves you so vulnerable to mistakes. And, and that's really what your problem is, is you do not want to be open for mistakes. Um, but again, cover one, you're looking at single safety, just like you would be out of the cover three. Um, blitzes, you're going to see more guys up around the line of scrimmage. For example, this actually isn't a bad blitz look where you got three guys. That's going to be more on a base by on who your opponent is, how many blitzes they're bringing, and so on and so forth. However, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, Hope y'all enjoyed it. Like I said, I just wanted to go over some of the basics of how to identify these coverages early. You always want to look at those safeties. You always want to look at the positions of the cornerbacks and where those linebackers are lined up. Um, the way you attack these zones, occupy the zone with two people. Try to do it on multiple sides of the, on um, two sides of the field so it can't be covered by one guy manually. Um, and then another thing against man, the same, same principle applies. Have man beaters going to different areas of the field. Ideally, again, this is uh, this is out of Arizona playbook. This cluster. Ideally, you want something like this, where you got something attack in the middle of the field and both outsides of the field. Um, it's rare that you're going to get something this ideal um, naturally. Um, however, you definitely can manufacture something similar to this. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please like, comment, subscribe. Um, I hope y'all have a great rest of your day, and I will see y'all in the next video. I'm going to come out with a little bit of a, a janky mini scheme uh, that I discovered out of the split, which I like a lot. It's something that's real basic, and it's real easy to read. Um, so I hope y'all enjoy that, and I will come at y'all with another video soon. Thank y'all so much.